friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about preserving nuts and seeds, raw or roasted, long term and how easy it is to do. And this is based on my own experience. I've been doing this for a while now. So I have a whole bunch. I try to bring out a jar of each kind that I have put up and I'm not sure if I forgot something, but I'll go over it real quick. Right here I have hazelnuts, hemp seed, almonds sliced, pecans, walnuts, pistachios, Brazil nuts, whole almonds, cashews, sunflower seeds, and peanuts. Some of these are at least three years old now, and I've had some nuts and seeds that are much older than that, such as the hemp seed. I didn't put a year on here, so I can't be certain, but I know it's much older than that. I would say a minimum of five years old here. Well, what I did was for the hazelnuts, because these, especially since these are raw, and I haven't been into them for quite a while, and these are from 2019, I decided to go ahead and open the jar and taste one to see how it tastes, just so I can say for certain that yes, these are still good. They still taste wonderful. So that's why I have this top on here. Now, this is one of the many off brands of uh, jar sealing tops you can get. Food Saver was the one to first come out with them. The nice thing about them is they have a little handle, but there's also an off brand that you can get now that also has a handle. It does make it much easier for coming off there. So I'm gonna demonstrate at least a couple different methods that you can vacuum seal because vacuum sealing your nuts and seeds is one of the best ways that you can keep them from going rancid and then also keep them in, keeping them in the coolest area of your home that you have. But even if your home gets pretty warm uh, and you don't have a really cool area, I still think by vacuum sealing, you're going to stave off the possibility of them going rancid. So one of the methods you can use for vacuum sealing, and this is the cheapest way to go, and I'll link to a few different sets down below, is if you can get the full set that has the little manual vacuum pump like this, because usually right around $20 or less, especially if you can get a coupon, you can get the both sizes of vacuum sealing tops, plus the vacuum pump and a few other little things to go with it. And when I do this, so it comes with a hose, I found the hose to not work very well. So because this has silicone here, you can just simply set it and hold it firmly in place. You don't have to press down hard. In fact, you don't want to press down real hard or you can prevent it from sealing, but just by placing it firmly over the hole and pumping by pulling upwards, kind of like a bicycle pump, except for you're pulling the air out instead of pushing the air in. And you just keep pulling on that till you just can't do it anymore. And then remove your top. And for some reason, my little liner keeps coming out, no big deal. And then I always test by holding it up by the lid to make sure that I got a good seal. Then when it comes to vacuum sealed goods, I always put the band on firmly, but not super tight, just to hold everything in place. I recommend doing that. It's not absolutely required, but I think it's the best idea because jars can come unsealed in storage like my Brazil nut jar right here did. It came unsealed and I did vacuum seal it again and it came unsealed again. So I may just need to put a different lid on there, but still these were good. So that way that will at least help keep air from getting in there. But also if you go to grab the jar and you don't realize it's unsealed and you don't have the band holding the lid in place, you could have contents going everywhere. So then the next thing is I need to get some more chia seeds. So I did an order from Azure Standard, which I love. I love Azure Standard. I do have a referral link down below. If you go through that link, I don't, you, you won't save any money, I don't think. But it does help us because if you place an order of at least $100 through any of our referral links at Azure Standard, it gives us a $25 credit, which really helps us because we have to, we don't have a drop point. So we get the stuff delivered here. So we have to pay shipping, which can be pretty expensive when you've got heavy items. So anyway, and so that really helps cover the cost of our shipping. So anyway, I did get some chia seed and I'm going to be vacuum sealing those up into some jars today. And I'm just going to demonstrate in one jar. So I got my stainless steel funnel in place and I'm just going to pour it in there. And when you're vacuum sealing, it's kind of like canning. You don't want to fill it clear up to the very top or it actually can impede the process and keep the jar from sealing well. 
but you can shake your ingredients down to get the, all that extra air space out, which I do recommend anyway, because the less air space you have in there in the first place, the better your stuff's gonna keep. And now, whoop, let me put this back in place, so now I can pour a little bit more in there. Okay, that should be good. And if it looks too full, I'll well, just shake it down some more. And there we go, that looks perfect. So you can see how I have that filled up too. And this time I'm going to use the food saver top. Where's my lid? Gotta get the lid in place. This is not a powder, so I don't have to put any kind of cloth or cupcake liner or anything like that over the top. It'll be just fine. And then, even though this little pump is great, I still like the brake bleeder pump better. That's just my preference. I find I can actually get a better suction on it with this. And so I just put the tip in like this. There's different types of tips you can use. I've just always done it this way, holding firmly in place. There's other things you can do to adapt it, to make it sit in there so you don't have to hold. And if you want more information on that, I'll link to a video I did uh, last year where I talk about tips on using the brake bleeder pump. I rest it against the counter so I'm not pumping like this but I'm pressing downward with the heel of my palm and then just pump until, well, pretty much until the needle stops moving. That's the best place to go by because especially if your brake bleeder pump is like mine and the needle is off, it's not quite calibrated right. Giving you a number <laughs> might not work, but I like to go until, well, until it stops moving for the most part. This is going way up there. Usually if it starts out at zero going up to where it says 400 or 15, that's usually going to be sufficient. But anyway, and no, I don't believe you can over pump these jars. Now see, look at there, it's sealed. So now I can put my band on and then I'll put what it is, which I can clearly see is chia seed, but just in case it kind of does look like black pepper, I will make sure I put chia seed and the date that I sealed this up. And then it looks like I can do probably at least another quart jar and maybe this is five pounds by the way of chia seed and then maybe another um, pint after that and then here I have some organic sunflower seeds now the sunflower seeds I did a video uh, storing the sunflower seeds now these are roasted and salted and organic and they were so hard to find well these have almost doubled in price since I bought these and I wanted to get more put up so I got to look at Azure Standard, which the reason I didn't buy from them in the first place for sunflower seeds is they didn't have roasted and salted. They only had the raw, which neither of us prefer. We like them roasted. But I thought, well, why not just, since this is a much, much, much better price, why not just go ahead and roast and salt them ourselves? So I plan on doing that for the first time. It sounds pretty simple. I think it's like 350 degrees for like 10 or 15 minutes spread out on a cookie sheet. And then you just kind of stir them once in there. So it should be pretty simple, but I'll be doing a video on that. So those who want to learn how at least I did it and uh, I'll give you my, and give you my reviews on how that turned out. See if that's something I want to continue. That's why I started with only a five pound bag. Patrick loves his sunflower seeds because I didn't want to get 25 pounds of raw sunflower seeds and find out that I failed at roasting them though. I really doubt that's going to happen. I think it'll be pretty simple and we'll save money in the long run. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention, you'll notice these two jars here are different. The walnuts and the uh, pistachios, these are recycled green olive jars. Well, as you can see, these, well, this almost fits, but it, typically your jar ceiling tops are not gonna fit over just uh, over recycled product jars because they're all in different sizes. Some are made in average canning sizes, like your wide mouth, regular mouth. Some are a little different. So in that case, I have quite a few jars of walnuts and pistachios uh, sealed in jars like this. What I did was I used the vacuum chamber that Patrick makes. And we've been selling these for a couple of years now. Now my Etsy store is no longer in existence. Well, it's there, but it's shut down. And so now we're only selling directly to people. And if you're interested in on being uh, on getting on the mailing list for our products, prices, and how to pay and how to purchase them, uh, just send me an email to raincountryhomestead at gmail.com and I'll send you that list. Anyway, I put the jar down in the chamber. I put the lid on top, tightening it down. I have a video just on how to use this. That I'll link to down below. And same thing with the brake bleeder pump. You'll see that I have one specifically for this, a separate one, so I don't have to keep 
unhooking it from this little port and then I just pump it up and then it seals my jars. So this will also work on canning jars. It'll work on any size jar that you can fit inside the chamber. We also have the half gallon chamber, which is significantly more in price. It's not like you would assume it would just be a little bit more. No, it's, it's significantly more because when you start buying parts like that to make these things in just going up the two sizes bigger in, in width, the price can as much as triple. I've even seen some of the items quadruple in price from the smaller size, the quart size. So this will fit bigger than a quart jar and because these are bigger than a quart. So you can do smaller jars, any jar that will fit in there, you can do as long as the lid that it has is in good condition and not all bent up. So anyway, that's how I put up nuts and seeds for long term. And so far, other than that one jar of opened Brazil nuts, I have not had any of them go rancid, no matter how old they are. And like I said, the, the hemp seeds, they're the oldest ones I have and never have gone rancid. So a lot of people assume just because something's high fat, it's gonna go rancid. Not necessarily. Some fats hold better in storage than other fats and how you store them really matters. You can go to, like I did, a couple of different university uh, food preservation extension sites and they'll tell you the same thing that vacuum sealing high fat foods will actually prevent them from going rancid. A lot of people will uh, start crying about botulism and I think especially if you're talking roasted nuts I think you're going to be reducing your your risk to zero. So if you're concerned about that I would suggest going with roasted nuts. Remember Planters Peanuts has been selling their peanuts in vacuum sealed jars for many years. And so if you can buy them at the store like that, why can't you just do it yourself that way? Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas, something to consider anyway. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.